All right, so I know it's easy to find stuff off the internet, like from Thingiverse or Thangs or Cult 3D, just to put into your 3D printer and get the object out. But there are some times where there are specific things that you need designed where you just can't find online. So today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to use FreeCAD. So let's get started. Real quick, today's sponsor is PCBWay. So if you're looking for high quality 3D prints or PCB manufacturing, look no further than PCBWay. They offer high quality and affordable pricing with top notch customer service. Now designing your 3D prints is very easy. You could just use FreeCAD like what I'm gonna be showing you in this video. All you have to do is upload the STL and you could get a quote in minutes. Once you place your order, PCBWay takes care of the rest. They'll manufacture your 3D prints or PCB with the latest technology and quality control standards, ensuring that it's perfect every time. The best part, PCBWay actually offers free shipping. So if you're looking into manufacturing or mass producing your 3D prints or 3D models, uh, look no further than PCBWay. Now back to the video. At first, FreeCAD is actually very intimidating. I actually got scared from it and I didn't use it for quite some time until recently. And now this is my 3D modeling software of choice. You could design stuff like this. This is a fan shroud for my M40 GPU. Um, I also designed this little thing, which is for my sink. So I have a sponge holder and some accessories put into the top. I also designed a little tray just to hold these little things in. Like this was in minutes, I could design something like that. But yeah, everything that I do now is all designed through FreeCAD. And I'm gonna be showing you guys the basics today, um, at least to get you to the point where it doesn't become intimidating anymore. So let's begin. Now I am on my desktop, which is a Linux operating system. It doesn't matter. You could use this on Windows, Mac, Linux like I am and I am actually going to install this for the first time because I don't have it installed on this computer so what I'm going to be doing is looking for free CAD and there you go 0.2 I think 0.21 is the latest uh, beta but 0.20 is the current version you could say so yeah it's going to grab all the things that you need because I am running Manjaro so Arch Linux I do have a few of these things that I should be updating too. I guess I'm gonna update it as well. Maybe I should have updated my computer before doing this because I know this is gonna take a few minutes. While that is happening, I'm gonna show you what my idea is. So I've been working on my Neptune 4 Pro time-lapse setup for quite some time. If you've seen it on my Twitter, um, I have a camera with the arm boom sticking out and it's running off a Raspberry Pi Zero with the high quality Raspberry Pi camera. As of right now, the Raspberry Pi is just dangling off the ribbon cable, which is terrible. And I need to find a way to install it to the boom arm. This way it's stable and it doesn't fall off. So my idea is that I will just attach this Raspberry Pi Zero uh, along this arm. So the first thing I need to do is just grab the measurements for this arm. And that's all I really need because everything else I could find online. Now with that information and everything installed on this desktop, all I need to do is create a new item. Just off the bat, this looks intimidating. Like what do I do? Where do I need to go? Anyway, I'm gonna show you what I do and it's how I got it to work in my brain, I guess. So first thing we need to do is go into part designer. And in here, we're gonna create a body and then create a sketch. So in this sketch, I am gonna use the XY plane. Uh, you could use the Z axis, like if you're gonna make something vertical, but I usually start off flat on the surface. So I'm gonna choose the XY plane. And from here, you just get this grid. Now, I don't know the measurements that I need for my Raspberry Pi Zero, so what I could do is just uh, type in zero Raspberry Pi measurements look up images because I just really need the images itself. Okay, here you go. This is a perfect image I need because I actually have all the things that I have written down, all the measurements, everything. So I'm gonna leave this up as I do my free CAD. Now, first thing you need to do is create some sort of a squared shape. If you have a bigger monitor, you'll be able to actually see all the tools, but you could also cl click on this right little arrow and it'll drop down the same tools. Now, first thing I need to do is create this little square. I don't care about the size because I am gonna fix this later on. And you're gonna notice that this is white. White means bad, green means good. You'll see what I mean in a second. First, we need to grab all the measurements and align everything perfectly. So in this next section of tools, can I just like drag this down? I can drag this down to make a new toolbar. And then I'll drag this down and probably some other stuff later on down the road. Maybe this one. No, I don't need this one actually. I'm gonna drag this down here and now I have all my tools spread it out in an area, except for this. Maybe I'll move this over here. Okay, now 
we're gonna need these uh, constraint tools. So right now this is for horizontal and this is for vertical. So horizontal, I need to click over here to the top bar and the length is 63.85 right now. But what I do need is 65 exactly. And then the vertical would be 30. So let's grab that, pop back into our free CAD and I'm gonna type in 65 over here. So it's gonna do that. And then for the vertical, remember to right click to get out of the tool. Uh, and then for the vertical, I'm gonna hit 30. So right now I have the exact measurements of the Raspberry Pi that I need. Uh, next you need to know is the center of this uh, little dot right over here. So I'm gonna measure the horizontal from one corner to the center. And since we know it's 65, we're gonna divide that by two and it's gonna automatically do the math for you and it'll align it to the center. Now I need to do the same thing for the vertical. So I'll, you could choose any dot, it's fine because I'm just splitting it into half. And I'm gonna select that. And this is 30 divided by two, or you could just put 15, you know, whatever works. And if you notice, it went from white to green, which means every constraint is perfect. It works out, you can't move this anywhere, I can't drag it anywhere. That means it's stuck in this spot. Green is good, that means everything's in place. So I'm gonna close out of this task, and then hit, go back into model. I'm gonna go back into the sketch model, and here is our sketch that we just made. Now. What I'm gonna do is select the sketch itself. You could hit spacebar to hide it. I really don't need to hide that right now. It's just for other stuff where if you're playing around and it's in the way, you can hide certain parts. So I'm gonna hit the sketch and what I'm gonna do is hit this button, which is the padding. Now I want it to be three millimeters thick. So at this point, the length of this, I want this to be three and hit okay. And now we automatically have our padding for our little base for the Raspberry Pi. Now, next thing we need to do is actually add arms that could grab onto the post. So I am gonna work on here and I am gonna create a new sketch. I'm gonna press this button over here to the left, which is create sketch. And then I only have one constraint that I could work with right now, which is the center dot. And that's not enough for me. So what I need to do is actually add more constraints. Uh, the best way is to use this little blue tool right here, external geometry. And it's gonna grab the external geometry from the top and from the left. If you need more, you could just select everything you want, but you're just using it as a geometry. Right click to get out of that, and now you can start designing the post that you need. So I don't know exactly what I'm gonna go for as far as the post here, but I know I want two of them, and we know that it is gonna be 12 millimeter. The hole itself is 12 millimeters because that's what we measured. So uh, from here, I am actually gonna make up some numbers because it doesn't have to be, I'm just going as the flow. So basically, since this is 7.8 millimeters already, let's just make this eight millimeters, okay? And then same goes for this arm itself. You can actually clone the th things that you wanna do. Uh, you don't have to make double of them. I'm just showing you what I'm doing right now. And then now, as far as the vertical restraint, we know that it has to be bigger than 12 uh, because that's how big the post is and if you need more surrounding or out of that. So if you wanna add two millimeters to each side, uh, 12 plus 2 plus 2 is 16, so we're going to have 16 millimeter thickness or the height of that. And same goes for this one, 16 millimeter height. So now we have sort of like a post that we want to go for. Uh, we will now actually finish up the restraint from the top to the middle point, And we're going to do 16 divided by 2. Uh, same goes for this one, 16 divided by 2. And then the distance from the middle. And you want this to be kind of pretty close, uh, like more towards the center. So since this is giving me 13, I'm just gonna stick with 13. And now you see that turn green. Same thing, I'm gonna go over here to the center and I'm gonna do 13 and that's gonna turn green. And now that everything is green, we are good to go. We could hit update if you want and then close out. You don't have to, you could if you want. And then now we're gonna take this second sketch and pad that as well. Let's do 15 millimeters. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now we have the padded uh, example. Now to rotate your screen, hold the middle mouse button to wherever angle you want, right click and then you can rotate whatever you need over here. Right clicking does nothing. Middle click could, uh, well, not middle click, but the scroll wheel will move that. 
and then that's to rotate. And then if you just hold the middle click, you'll drag the model around. Now, I always get confused with the angles, so I go zero, one, two, like your number pad will actually resort the visual looks of this. Now, next thing we need to do is actually add a hole through this entire thing. So I am gonna select this and add a sketch. And then from here, I'm gonna need some sort of uh, geometry, external geometry, so I know exactly how far I need to go from each side. Actually, this is center, I just need the bottom of this, that's fine. Then I'm gonna create a circle somewhere here. So I'm gonna choose constraint. Yeah, we don't have to be perfect because we're gonna resize this. And from here, I'm gonna hit the drop down and choose constraint diameter. And then we'll click on the outside. So the diameter we know we need is 12, not the radius. Radius will be six, the diameter will be 12. So I'm gonna hit okay with that. And then now we have to align everything together. So first I know I have to align this perfectly in the center. So I'm gonna click on this dot and this dot right here, which if I could click on it, there you go, zero. So now it's set perfectly in the center. And then we're gonna need a vertical. So we're gonna choose this vertical right here and this vertical over here. And we could either do six or we could do 12 divided by two. You know, it's, it's the same thing. So now we know it rests perfectly down here. Now we know it's a little bit too big up here and we'll change that later on down the road. So we're gonna save this and go back to our padding. And from here, we're gonna change this and get this down to say nine millimeter it actually seems to be perfect. Maybe eight, eight or nine is right around that area. So I'm gonna do eight. And then now I'm gonna choose the sketch. We're gonna use pocket. And now the pocket has actually created that 12 millimeter uh, surrounding around here. We are gonna punch it all the way through until it reaches to the other side. You can see that line that is being created and then it's gonna get to the other side. And there we have it, 42 millimeter distance. Hit okay. And now we have ourselves a little clamp that will hold onto our arm. That's basically the design concept that I have. Now, we still need to be able to mount the Raspberry Pi onto this board. So next thing we need to do is actually, which I should have done earlier, but I'm doing this in a weird step so you could see the process of certain things that don't go well. So what I'm gonna do now is create the top part of this board. I'm gonna create a new sketch and I am gonna take this blue thing again to add the external geometry and grab the up, down, left, right, okay? And then I'm gonna create four circles. So I'm gonna create one here, uh, and then one here, one here. Again, you don't have to be perfect because we're gonna add the geometry there. Now I have to go look at my Raspberry Pi Zero and take a look at this. So we know looking at this geometry, it's 3.5 millimeters from the top edge, and it's also 3.5 millimeters from the outside edge. All right, so now that we know the diameter and how far it is from the edges, we can now finish designing the holes that we need. So we're gonna go in each one, uh, choose the diameter, and we said it was, uh, was it 3.5? Yes, it was 3.5. So we're gonna go there, click on these, 3.5, 3.5. Again, we could just clone it, but I'm just showing you the longer process, you could say. So now that we have 3.5 on each, we're gonna start setting up the horizontal. No, this is the vertical. So I'm gonna choose the vertical from that. It's 3.5 from the top. Same with here, 3.5 from the top. And then this one is 3.5 from the bottom, 3.5 from the bottom. And then this one is 3.5 from the bottom as well. And then now we need to set the horizontal, which is 3.5 from the edges. Sometimes I have to zoom in, so we're gonna choose that, choose this corner, 3.5. And now you see how I turn it green. And I'm gonna use the middle mouse button and drag it over. Same goes for here, 3.5. And then here, with here, 3.5. And now everything is green, we are all good. We could close this out and also set in a pocket. And because we know it's only a three millimeter thickness, we're just gonna switch this down to three millimeters on the left. 
and there we have it now if you want to make this a little bit more fancy because we know the radius of the corners I'm going to grab each corner by holding control and then I'm going to spin this around grab that last corner right over here by holding control as well and now you see how it's green we're just going to fillet the corners and now it's going to add that radius there and we know it's a three millimeter radius so we might as well just stick with it so we're going to do that three millimeter radius hit OK and then go back to our original outlook which is zero on the number pad and there we have it our little tiny board thing that it's custom made now you might want to add little cornering stuff over here what's cool is that you could actually do this where it's flat or you could do round again and it'll make it look a little bit better so i'm going to keep it with this uh, do i want two millimeter oh yeah two millimeter looks pretty good so i'm going to save this this is all set. We have our full design that we need for the Raspberry Pi to be mounted on the arm. So I'm going to hit save. We'll just call this um, newer. I think that's what it's called, newer arm. And from here, I'm going to go to file, export. Oops, I got to choose the body. Let me hit OK on this. Choose the body so you can see. And then now file, export. And then I could export this as a object, STL, whatever you want. For me, I'm going to use STL because this is something that you could actually upload directly to your slicer, which is Cura or whatever slicer you use. And once you have that, the next is history. You just have to 3D print it. All right, now that everything is 3D printed and you can see from the time lapse, I can now mount this directly onto the arm. And you can see it's actually snug. It actually holds on tight and I can rotate it and it won't fall off. And then I can actually attach my Raspberry Pi directly on there by using these plastic uh, screws that I have. And I'll leave a link to those because they're actually very useful for projects like this. I, I rather prefer this over metal because metal could create contact and using plastic was just a little bit easier. So yeah. That is it to create a 3D model just like this. These were the little basic steps that I learned and I've been just growing from there. This is the, the hurdle. And once I got through this part, I was able to design a lot of my own parts. Anyway, that is it for me. If you guys have any questions, hit me up on Discord because there's a lot of members on my Discord that actually know FreeCAD more than I do. And that's where I've been getting a lot of my help from. Yeah, and if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.